ikaw na covid ka I had I had covid. How was that experience getting covid? Uh, that was the one of the worst experiences for me <laughs> uh, because uh I thought that I was going to die already. When uh, did you get covid? Uh March of last year when the lockdown started March. Wow. The lockdown was March 15. I was in Cebu uh a few days before that I flew back to Manila March 14. When I got back after a few days, I was coughing. I was so bug opening COVID. The first lockdown was first still lockdown, brand new. Yeah, so we didn't really know what to expect. We didn't, you know, we were wearing masks already at that time, but not as grabby like as now. now. So I think people were taking it lightly at that time. Okay, and um, there was even what uh, pamangane no uh, medicine for it at that time. So h- how did you know you had COVID? I had all the symptoms. Okay. You know, um I was coughing, I was uh I was having chills, I was having a fever. Um and towards uh a few days after, I couldn't breathe anymore. Wow. And when I went into the hospital because my doctor told me to get Was it Cebu or Manila? I was in Manila already. Okay. My doctor told me to go in so I had x-rays and all that. They found out that I had pneumonia in both lungs already. Wow. And then you'd see all the white spots on my lungs, so it was really COVID. And then, they, of course, they took a swab, but uh, positive at, again. At that time, the swab would take you five to seven days before you could get back. Right, <laughs> So it took a while before they they got my results. How did your family feel? They were very worried because uh, none of them got affect, uh, infected. Also, no, uh, I, th- you know, if if they did, they they would have probably been. Asymptomatic because they never got any of what I got. So you were admitted, Papa Chen. Yeah, but okay. uh, when I came back from Cebu, I isolated myself already when I started feeling bad, so my family wouldn't be affected. Okay. So I was isolating myself before I went to the hospital, and uh, I was there for 10 days. Okay. Uh, you know, when I when I went in, I was thinking na murag. I'm not sure oh, if I'm going to come out. You know, because you were uh, really thinking that this yeah. is it. Because I was, I was, uh, I was uh, thinking about my insurance and all that, and I I hope that uh, it's enough for my family to live on and all that. It was it was that bad. But you were not in the ICU. No, uh, thankfully no, because my doctor said it's a good thing that I was healthy to begin with. Okay. That's why it didn't go. It didn't. Um, it wasn't as bad right. as the other people. But if not, uh, it was. Going towards that direction because every day my statistics were getting pretty bad. How you know, did that feel? By how physically, what, what was your what? What were you feeling? Um, you know when grabby yung sakit. You know when you're coughing, it feels like everything your lungs were coming out. Wow. You know it's like it's like you were going to puke out everything. Wow. And then uh, aside from that, um, you had a headache. All the time, okay. And then you couldn't breathe. You really couldn't breathe. You take a few steps. Uh, let's say, I was in the I, I was in the ER for about three days waiting for a room. Really? Yeah. And there was no one there to help you. There was no one then to buy you food or whatever if you're hungry. So it was you were on your own basically, except for the nurses, of course. But you couldn't uh, you couldn't really bother your, them. Your your wife time. wasn't with you anymore. No, she bawal couldn't. Na bawal na. You you, you don't. You can't bring anyone with you to the hospital. Okay, they might get infected also. Right, right. So, if I was going to the bathroom, I had to take my oxygen off and then walk to the bathroom. When I get there, you were going to faint, faint already. You could because because there was no oxygen in your lungs. Uh, COVID situation in Cebu. Um, I remember when uh, back back in the first quarantine, COVID hit hit hard in Cebu because. Cebu is very congested, yeah. diba? And there's yeah. a lot of uh, uh, congested, talaga. You, you, the, the 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 low income places yeah. are yes. in the middle, and then the element mm-hmm. it surrounds everything, and uh, it spread like wildfire back in back in the first uh, back first phase of COVID. Today, it seems like everything's almost back to normal. I see I see my friends in Instagram in Cebu. They go to the beach. They're partying. They're going to restaurants. Isn't it scary? Um, actually, we have all the data because uh, um, a party mate of mine who who runs the emergency operation center in Cebu, okay, and you know he's also in charge of whatever IATF does. Mm. Um, they do these briefings every day. Okay, what they do is they check 
um, they have everybody swab. They have okay. everybody, everybody tested uh, per area. And every day they have the the reports that come in okay. where in like this area, how many new transmissions are every day? How many people have been uh, infected. Uh, infected and all that. So it comes out to only about 30 to 45 people per day Wow! in Cebu City. Wow. So it's that low now. Before it was so, so high. That was during June or July that Why last year. Why is the number slow now? Because uh, everybody has to follow the protocols. You know, if you don't, if you don't follow, like let's say if you don't want to be uh, isolated or whatever, they ask the police to come and get you, put you in the isolation center, which is for everybody's good. Mm-hmm. But you're put in an isolation sh- center, you don't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's uh, it's it's free, you know, unless you know you 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 want to go into a private hospital. That's when you pay now. Yeah, but uh, they put up all these isolation centers so so that they could accommodate all the people who were. Who are getting sick? Okay, that's very interesting, though. So, yeah. so basically, to round up the, the whole thing, Cebu is doing good. Yes, they're doing very well in terms of uh, of uh, containing the the the, uh, the pandemic. Vaccinations are you know, are are being distributed every yes. day fast. Yeah, in fact, I was uh, I was there the other week because I was helping the government mm. um, uh, tell the people about being vaccinated because there are so many people who are yeah. thinking that. I don't want to get vaccinated because this is funny huh? because mm. some of them especially in the mountain barangays they think they become they'd become a zombie yeah, if yeah, they get yeah. <laughs> vaccinated so, I think there's just lack of information yeah so we were doing the information drive helping helping you know uh, the government talk to these people because I was telling them about my experience of COVID mm. you know, that it's it's not something pleasant to deal with so uh, better have yourself vaccinated yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people in, in the provinces, up in the mountains, or wherever, you know, mm. and the older people also. Yeah. I, I noticed they're, they're, they're scared to get vaccinated because, yeah, they, they, they're afraid to, uh, there's a microchip inside or yeah. they're turned into a zombie one day, etc. But, you know, if you look at the other countries, except for LA, for America, in LA, in mm. America, in Israel, they're all, they've all reached that herd immunity that everybody can walk around with no masks already. They're yeah. back to normal. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, you know, um, we're hoping that everybody gets vaccinated also so that uh, we could at least get some sense of normalcy and get back to our yeah. daily lives. You know? And the economy will go up, back yeah. up and everybody yeah. will have a, you know, better uh, better source of income. Yeah. Income stream for yeah. everybody. Yeah.